thanks for coming. Uh, obviously a good win Saturday. Uh, happy for our players. A tremendous game by our entire football team. Obviously the defense led the charge. Uh, played very, very well. Uh, five interceptions in one game is certainly something to be proud of. We're excited for them. But they play with great passion, great energy, flying to the football. Uh, obviously offensively we scored, scored enough to win the game, which is good. But uh, anytime you win, you're happy. And we certainly enjoyed that. Getting ready for Iowa right now. Certainly Coach Ferentz is you know, one of the best coaches in our game, has been there for such a long time and continues to be, you know, the standard of technique, sound, football. They do everything right on offense and on defense. They know what they're doing. They know who they are. And um, it's a great place to play, a great environment to go play in. So we're excited to go play a ranked team. And uh, but certainly a tremendous challenge and a very, very good football team and a very, very great football program over the years. And we all know that. So that will answer any questions. Coach, not just this past Saturday, but the entire season, you guys currently lead the Big Ten in turnover margin. I think last Saturday you addressed briefly just the focus that you guys have in practice. What are the elements towards being, you know, the takeaway monsters you guys are? Well, I think, obviously, on defense, we talk about, you know, getting the football. That's something that's been going on here. Um, you know, I think that the, the football, whoever's got it, you have a chance to score. So they're trying to be around the ball. We're trying to get takeaways. We're trying to strip the football. We're trying to be, you know, ball hawks when it's in the air and go act like it's our ball and not theirs. So I think our defense is doing a great job. Obviously, we got one on special teams Saturday, which was, again, you know, if you saw it, we obviously watched it on film and showed our football team. I mean, he's flying down the field on the kickoff team. You know, an, an odd kick, the ball bounces. I mean, it's like it was like a sandwich. It spun back to us, but it was perfect. I mean, he ran, but his effort of flying to the football and doing his job got him around the football. So that's what we're on defense. We're always talking about it. And then, obviously, offensively, we start every every day with you know, with ball security. We're trying to hold the football, and protect the football. Um, obviously, we've had we've had five on offense right now, all in the quarterback room. So we have to continue to minimize that. But we're trying to protect the ball. It is if you're given the privilege of carrying the, the football, that's a really really big honor because the whole team's counting on you to do your job. Is again, you're not more important than the other ten guys on the field, but you do have the ball. So we make a big deal about it. NPS Nonprofit Services has the technology and know-how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on-prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877-797-8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. We just tell them to throw it to the open guy. That's what we try to do on our team. Um, how we teach decision making? Obviously, we have a way we read coverages. So you know, every every play, has a, we're going to look at what they do and wherever that defender goes, that we're going to find the next guy. And we're hopefully, I mean, as simple as it sounds, and we're trying to throw it to the one they're not covering. Um, throwing catchable, advanceable balls is something we say a lot. Um, obviously, if I'm running right now and I'm on the move this way and I throw the ball right there, I can catch and run and have a good play. If I throw it right here. It still may be complete, but it probably won't be as big a play. If I throw it back there, it may be a deflection and a pick. So six inches will make you a star. We talk about that a lot. And catchable, advanceable balls. So you know, that's that's probably what we do with quarterback. I noticed in the game that you moved the offensive tackle to putting a tackle in motion several times. Where did that concept come from, and what response you're looking for from the defense to that move? Yeah, we've done that throughout the year. Um, we're just we're trying to create a different edge for the defense. Obviously, certain teams adjust to shifting and movement different than other teams. And so obviously, every game we're looking for some advantage we can get in a matchup type of a plan, you know, unbalanced line or whatever that is. So every game is a little bit different. So we're just, we started doing that, I think, at 16. Um, it's just something we've kind of continued to carry with us. And it's something else the defense has to prepare for. And for us, we hope it's still simple for us to know what we're doing. Coach, uh Kasim's three best passes seem to be his touchdown passes. They were perfect on the money, especially the last one. Are you satisfied with his growth in the throwing game as the season goes on, or are you looking for a lot more? Yeah, I don't think we're ever satisfied. I think, um, you know, I think obviously those three touchdown passes were very, very critical and very good throws, as you mentioned, some under duress, some on the move. Um, so. We're going to focus on what we can get better at all the time, no matter how well we play, no matter how many touchdowns we score. 
and we're going to coach in that way. Um, as I mentioned on Saturday after the game, Kasim hasn't played, you know, a tremendous amount of football yet. And that quarterback position, a lot of it is experience, right? Certainly talent's amazing, and, and uh, he's certainly blessed with talent, as is Pig. But experience and making the right decisions, you know, to the question, how do you make decisions? You have to learn how to do that. So I think he's getting better all the time. I'm very happy. We're, you know, we won on Saturday. So we were happy with how he played Saturday. Those three passes were big. The passes that didn't work out quite as well or the runs or the calls, we're going to be ultra critical of in our building. We're going to fix them. But um, he cares. He's playing really hard. He's trying hard, and, and um, as all our guys are. So I'm, I'm happy with him. When when you've thrown to your backs out of the backfield, there have been some fairly big plays. Um, is it something that you want to do more, or is it something that because you had maybe some early success defenses are taken away from you? No, well, I would say, you know, we always try to do what the defense allows us to do. Right? The defense can stop. Say that a lot. They can stop whatever they want to stop. They can double cover a guy. They can stop the run. So, um, every game's unique. You know, I mean that that you know, some games there may be a game and they get a bunch of balls. I mean, for whatever reason, it is what it is. We had a couple Saturday that we just not, we just probably missed. We had a great pressure on. I think it was the second play of the game, which ended up making a kind of an errant throw. And we had a naked that we kind of just didn't quite get over a guy. So um, they're in there, and uh, we're trying to you know, we try to spread the ball around. We try to make it for a defense to their hit chart that a lot of guys touch the football. So it just kind of depends on the game. Matt, you. You've been up here, you're heading into your seventh game, more than halfway through the season. Um, you're the interim head coach, but you've been running this thing for, for more than half the season now. How much do you want, how much does the staff want, how much does the team want? Some resolution about what's going to be the reality for Maryland football going forward. Um, what anybody wants, it doesn't matter. So I think, you know, we're taking it day by day. I think, I, you know, we said that from the beginning, and I think that was a good plan at the time. That's what we're doing. We're, we're pushing, we're pushing, we're pushing. I've continued to say how proud we are as a staff of our players for focusing on football, on each other, uh, going through a grieving process. Uh, all those things are what, what are really, really matter. Um, and that's all we can do. So right now, I'm still the offensive coordinator who gets to come in here and stand up and talk to you guys, which is awesome. And uh, But other than that, we go back in there. We're just working. and. Uh, uh, I don't think there's any other answer for it. I mean, it is what it is. Um, there's people who are making those decisions. But right now, as a football program, we're working as hard as we can to do the best job we can today. And tomorrow, we'll see what tomorrow is. Just to follow up on that, um, in, in terms of the way the players have been able to sort of not make it, not allow it to be a distraction for everything that's gone on, do you think it's just because of the routine they're in and as the season goes on, it, it just becomes more of a routine, not to say that they're forgetting what happened over the summer, but it just becomes more of a routine, what they're used to, and they're able to, as college students, college players, able to do that maybe more easily than adults would be, you know, older older people would be able to do it. I mean, I think it's, you know, like we've talked about, and I'm certainly not an expert on, on the grieving process. I think everybody does it differently. I think our football players have, have worked very hard at trying to manage all of this, manage the loss of a friend and a teammate, to lean on each other, to, to stick by each other, to help each other through that, and then also to know that they got to get up and still be a great son or be a great brother or be a great friend or be a, you know, a great student. Or then, and then let's try to be the best football player we can be too and be the greatest teammate I can be. All those things are what life is. And old, young, whatever it is, everybody deals with that differently. Everybody has to go through that differently, and I think that's what they're focused on right now. And again, we were very proud of our players for the way they're doing it and the way they're playing hard. And you know, there's never, it's never going to be whatever we all want it to be, but it is going to be the best we can make it today, right? Do the best you can with what you got where you are. And that's what our players are doing. They're working very, very hard to, to help each other, and that's what we're most proud of. They come to work every day, they work really hard, they're practicing very hard. They're going to class. They're doing all those things they're supposed to do. So we're very proud of them. To your right, Wayne. But they... Iowa has a developing <laughs> passing game to go along with their legendary run game. Does the throwing to the tight end change any of your, and I know you love defensive philosophies, right. does it change any of your defensive philosophy to have to cover tight ends all over the field? Yeah, well, he's, I mean, they use, 
they use their tight ends well. They've got great players. I think their quarterback, Stanley, you know, he's had a tremendous game last week. He is playing at a very high level. He's been there for a while in their system. Again, the great thing about that program is they have a system that they continue to learn and teach and go, and over time, those players know what it is. So I think their ability to throw the football, they're scoring points, you know, they're doing a great job, and it starts it starts with the quarterback. But obviously, going back, you know, they're really, really good up front. Their offensive line is is you know one of the best in the country, and, and then they have those weapons, as you mentioned, that you have to cover everybody, and that presents challenges for us. So our defense is, has got a great challenge ahead of them to try to to try to you know minimize their opportunities to make big plays. Coach, their pass rush, uh, second of the Big Ten in sacks. Uh, when you look at the tape, what can, what's going to be the biggest challenge, especially with those kids, Nelson and uh, Epinesa up front? Well, again, again, their scheme is, you know, they line up and you watch them. They, they bring pressure, you know, when they feel they need to get home, but they get a lot of pressure with just those four front, the front four players they have. They're strong. You know, they play great with their hands, um, and they create a lot of chaos for you on offense. So you've got to be able to get rid of the football on time. Which it sounds like you're saying, well, the quarterback, it's not the quarterback, right? The wideouts have to get open on time. The, uh, the play caller has to call a play that works on time. And then obviously we have to block them well enough to let the, let the quarterback get rid of the ball on time. You sit back here and hold the football, good, bad things happen. So again, it's still 11 men doing their job, but they are a tremendous defense. They're not, I mean, they've given up, really, have given up points in only two games. And obviously the Wisconsin game, they scored 14. Points, I think the last minute, six seconds of the game, right? They went in and scored to take the lead, and then late in the game got another one. So they are uh, they're a tremendous, tremendous defense that's playing everybody very, very well. And it's a huge challenge for us to go in there and, and find a way to move the football a little bit and score some points. Andy. What kind of an asset has Wade Lee's been this year for this team? You know, maybe in a field position battle as he's continually able to pin teams inside the 20. You know, he's been awesome. Like, I talk about. I don't do much, but I sure don't do anything with that guy except sit back there and clap for him. But he uh, he's really, really good. He's fun to be around. And I think, again, it's about winning. And you, we've all seen those guys who <coughs> could maybe get a pooch punt in, but it always ends up going in the end zone because they don't want to, you know. He's not worried about stats. He's worried about winning. And he's done a great job of, of dropping in there. Obviously, Saturday, I, I mentioned that after the game. But what a, you know, with the field position battle, we had him pinned in a lot. And it's very hard to call plays inside your 10-yard line. Right? I know that we don't ever talk about that, but it is. Right? You get in there inside the five, there's only so many things you can do, and that limits what you can do on offense. And it's a great job by our defense keeping them down there, and they deserve that credit. But to your question, he's putting it down there. And our punt team and getting down their way. We had one, he really boomed, that wasn't even a pooch punt, and we got down and got it covered. So our punt team's doing a good job, and he is uh, he's a nasty, he's a weapon. He's a weapon. You guys are a couple games short of playing in a bowl game. What would it mean to you guys after this year if you entered a bowl game and played in there? Appreciate the question, but right now we're just, you know, I think our players have done a great job of we're worried about one week at a time and whether we win or we lose. We're worried about, you know, so that's the great thing this morning. We had our Tuesday morning meeting. We talked about here we are, what did you do last night? Got to school, got your tutoring done. How are you going to get ready for the game today? We're focused just on Iowa. And uh, we'll see what happens there. And next week, we'll, we'll move on. So we're not we're not going to get into that right now. But hopefully, we play well this week. Time for two more. Um, Coach uh, Byron Coward's been playing very well all season, but it seemed like he had a breakout game against Rutgers. What do you say is of his progression as a team team and as a player this year since he's came over from home? I think he's a super talented young man, as everybody knew. Um, I I really really enjoy him. He's been a guy that has been fun to be around. As I always say, I'm just kind of watching those guys. But he, whatever we're asking him to do, he tries to do. He was a captain last week for us for the first time. He, uh, he has tried to lead. And obviously, as you come in to a new program, there's a little bit of a, a transitional period there, correct? There's guys who've been here a long time who are the leaders. No matter how talented you are, you still have to earn everybody's respect. And I think he's done a great job of that. Whatever we ask him to do, he's done. I agree, he played very, very well Saturday. He's, he's continued to get better. But it probably, for me, more than the playing is just the way he is. You know, he's bought into making the best teammate he can be, helping us be the best football team, team we can be. And uh, I really, really enjoy him. I'm happy for him. He's having success. 
Matt, what did you guys take away from the experience playing at Michigan that can be carried over into Iowa on Saturday? And what will it take for this team to sort of finish or, or be in a, in, a, in a competitive game uh, on the road against a, a ranked team? Well, I think we can take away that we played hard, um, and, I, and I have to coach better. So that will take that away from it. We, we're, you know, our, our kids are playing very hard. You know, they're excited to play a good team. And they feel like they're a good team, but obviously you have to go. You have to go play and, and, and you know beat those teams. And um, obviously, certainly the Michigan game. You know, to your question, we didn't do that. So this week is a different week. But I always, you know, they said they're five and one, and they they're one you know one play away from from being undefeated. I think they're a tremendous football team. I, I've played there before, and it's a great environment. So our guys have a lot of, of work ahead of them to get ready to go in and prepare. And they're excited for the challenge, like we are every week. They're excited to go play. So we're going to go play our best, and we'll see what happens. Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks.